have problems they've been having. So let's have a look at the space they're occupying here. And it's really broken down into three different areas. They've got the main entrance area that also covers zones three, four, and five, as well as the pizza kitchen. This is where people normally enter the premises. And it's also where one of the terminals that the waitstaff use is located, as well as where there's going to be a bunch of customers seated that they'd ultimately like to give some free Wi-Fi to. Towards the back of the premises, they have another kitchen, the main kitchen, as well as an entree kitchen, a bar, and zones one and two. There's also a payment terminal sitting up there that, again, the staff also use. Then there's a third area, the outdoor zone, and this is precisely what it sounds like. It is an area which is not enclosed and instead has tables that are put out there each day and again has patrons who they would like to give Wi-Fi connectivity to. Now here's the problem at the moment. They have a Wi-Fi network, a very basic network. They have one access point at the bar towards the right of the screen and one access point at the main entrance, which is around the bottom left of that pizza kitchen up in the top left. They have huge amounts of Wi-Fi dead spots, and this makes things very difficult for the staff who have an iPad that can take orders from people. Now the iPad needs to be able to talk to the Wi-Fi in order to send the order back to the same server that the two terminals talk to, which is located in the bar. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi keeps dropping out, and the iPad becomes pretty much useless. It won't send the order back, and they have to keep reverting to paper and other manual means of taking people's orders. This is the immediate term problem we're going to solve. We're going to give them Wi-Fi everywhere, and we're going to do it in such a way that when later on they want to provide guest Wi-Fi access, we'll simply set up another VLAN and configure the Unify environment to do precisely that. Let's start talking about what we're going to put in this environment. Now, I want to start with where the internet comes in, which is over here around the Entree Kitchen. We're going to connect their existing ADSL modem directly into a security gateway. I've put it over here in order to sit it directly next to that connection. We're then going to connect that security gateway over to a switch 8 150 watt. And that switch is going to sit over at the main entrance. Now fortunately, this connection is already wired. So the cabling is already there to be able to distribute the network in this fashion. At the main entrance here, there's also a couple of VoIP phones. So having all those ports available on this switch is going to come in very useful. To control the network, we're going to run a cloud key off this switch. And of course, the cloud key takes a PoE-enabled connection, which the switch 8150 watt has eight of. On another one of those PoE connections, we're going to run an AC HD unit. And we've chosen an HD because this is where we have a high density of people. And ultimately, this unit is going to be mounted on the roof with the line of sight to just about everyone in each of those three zones that it covers. So that'll give us very good connectivity in that area. In order to cater for Wi-Fi down towards zone two in the bottom right, we're gonna run an in-wall unit down here. One of the reasons we're using an in-wall unit down here is because of those two Ethernet jacks on the underside of it. We need a couple of jacks there because there's a terminal used for ordering. And again, this is where this service sits, over here in the bar area. So it's gonna give us both Wi-Fi and wired connectivity for those two devices. Now this would probably be enough, but just to be sure, we're gonna put a mesh unit here in the outdoor area. And of course, a mesh unit is perfect for the outdoor because it's designed to be weather resistant. So what this will ultimately do is give us plenty of capacity to connect all of the wired things in our fresco, as well as give us plenty of Wi-Fi not just for the staff now, but for the customers in the future as well. So this is the bit where we're gonna move on from slides and start looking at the browser as we set up the network in Alfresco. So let's jump into it. And I'm gonna begin by plugging in 
three of the new unified devices that we're going to install in the restaurant. So here's what they all are. I'm going to take our existing internet connection, plug it into the WAN port of the security gateway, and then on the LAN port, I'm going to plug in the switch 8, 151, and into that switch, I'm then going to plug in the cloud key. Now this is all I'm going to begin with, and I've merely plugged it in. So there's no configuration yet. This is just straight out of the box. Plug these three units in together in this fashion, and then jump over to the browser. In Chrome, I have the free Ubiquiti device discovery tool extension already installed. I've done a few Ubiquiti installs before. Now this tool is essential because it is going to do exactly what it sounds like it does. It's going to help me discover the controller on the network and make the process of setting everything up really simple. So this is already installed on my machine, which is connected into the switch. Now remember, that switch also has a controller connected to it, and it's connected to the security gateway, which has an upstream connection via that WAN port to the internet. Now, doing this alone, again, straight out of the box, means that my machine should have internet connectivity. And because it's got internet connectivity, I can now browse over to Unify, Dot .ubnt dot com. So this looks good. Internet is working. I can see the website. It's asking me to log on, and I've previously created an account there. If you don't have one already, you can create a free one now. And then once I've finished the authentication process, I'm now logged on to the Unify website. We want to look at the third row here because we can see that there's a Unify Cloud Key version 2, which is presently pending adoption. Now this is the one in my local network, and it's been identified by that Ubiquiti device discovery tool extension running in Chrome. Now I'm gonna make this as easy as possible and just go up and adopt that Cloud Key. And as soon as I do this, we can see that there's already a firmware update available. So the first thing I'm going to do here is upgrade the firmware on that cloud key before we start doing anything else. The cloud key now wants to reboot. Okay, so the cloud key is back up and running. And we can see now there are a few simple steps. Let's open that controller wizard. There's our security warning from Chrome. We're expecting that. So we'll drop down into advanced and proceed to that local IP address anyway and continue to the next step. What we're seeing now is a list of other devices which the controller has found on the local network. And we can see here that the two models it's found are the security gateway and the switch 8 PoE 150 watt. And you can see the IP addresses they've been assigned there as well. Now we're going to make this super simple and just tick that checkbox right off the top in order to configure both of those devices and proceed to the next screen. So we're now up to configuring Wi-Fi. But remember, we don't actually have any Wi-Fi access points plugged in yet. But that doesn't matter because the controller is going to store this configuration. And when we later plug in those three wireless access points, they're going to inherit the settings which we configure now. So I'm going to begin by giving this an SSID. And in this case, I'm going to call it Alfresco Staff. Later on, in the future, we'll create a separate network, which will be for Alfresco Guests. I'm now going to enter a nice, strong security key and then proceed to the next step. This is the final part of the controller configuration. All of that looks good. Let's now finish the setup. Okay, so all of that is configured. There's one last login to do, which is to now authenticate to the cloud key itself with that account we just created for. It. So this is the Alfresco admin account. Let's log straight onto that. And here we have our controller. So this is it. This is the basics of the network now set up.